In the 1920s, Cuba experiences a period of economic development against a backdrop of political corruption. Cuban President Gerardo Machado is determined to stay in power at all costs. But to do this, he must maintain ultimate control over his political opponents, not only physically, but also psychologically. The solution for this dictator's total domination is the incredible island complex Presidio Modelo, Cuba's model prison. It was created and conceived by a Cuban dictator who drew upon an 18th century social reformer whose whole ethos was that behavior could be modified via surveillance. Though originally intended as a tool to rehabilitate prisoners, surveillance here comes in the form of an oppressive observation tower at the center of the structure, which is key to the building's design. You have a central observation tower, and then you have a circular structure that surrounds that tower, which is where all the cells are. And the idea is that all the prisoners in their cells are not really sure whether the guards are looking at them or looking at their neighbor downstairs, and so they have to be on their best behavior all the time. That design inside the prison certainly feels quite menacing to me. That central tower with guards who theoretically then can be observing what's going on in all of those prison cells at any time. I mean, it certainly feels quite big brother, something you might have read in George Orwell's 1984. Construction begins in 1926 using inmate labor. As they complete each building, it is populated. And these structures are not just designed to create paranoia amongst the prisoners. They also have an unexpected engineering benefit. This philosophy of prisoner observation actually led to a very interesting structural advantage. And this advantage is the fact that having a circular wall going all the way around meant that there was an inherent stiffness in the structure that meant you don't need to put intermediate floors in to keep the structure stable. By the 1930s, Presidio Modelo is fully operational. Each building contains 465 cells that house two inmates, all of which face inwards towards the central guard tower. It has a total capacity of over 3,000 inmates. But most incredibly, there are no cell doors. The architecture itself affects, shapes, and enforces the behavior of those imprisoned. The tower was to control the prisoners inside. If there were any discussions, we'd say, hey there, shh, watch it, and they would. The tower was to maintain order. Unseen by the prisoners, who never know if and when they are being watched, the guards enter the observation tower through a 98 feet long underground tunnel. Hidden from view, the guards keep an eye on the prisoners through narrow slits in the top of the tower. You're constantly being watched, not only by the prison guards from the central tower, but other prisoners whose cell is only a few feet from yours. There's no privacy whatsoever, and it must have generated a whole lot of paranoia. The large open space within each building makes surveillance easy, and the result is that the inmates increasingly police themselves. Even at mealtimes, within the shorter central structure, there is no respite from the watchful eye of the guards. You would think that leaving your cell where you're constantly under surveillance and going for a meal would be a nice experience of chatting with your fellow cellmates. Not at all. You went to a building that was called the Hall of the 3,000 Silences, and it was aptly named because you weren't allowed to speak. Imagine how oppressive that would be. You're being watched all day in your cell, and now you're having a meal, and you can't even speak. Ironically, its cutting-edge design, originally conceived to rehabilitate convicts, earns Presidio Modelo a reputation for horror. And the prison relies on more than watchful guards to keep its inmates under control. There are all sorts of legends about the prison, including the fact that there were crocodiles in the ponds and lakes on the perimeter of the prison itself. When this was built, there were crocodiles living there. And the prisoner who escaped, if he didn't get caught running, 
he would be taken by them when he got there. No freedom. That was it. After multiple regime changes, its terrifying approach to imprisonment works for 27 years. But then, in 1953, its most notorious inmate enters its doors. The communist revolutionary Fidel Castro serves two years here for attempting to overthrow the ruthless dictator Fugencio Batista. Seeing the psychological success of the jail's effective design firsthand, Castro realizes the potential power of paranoia when he overthrows Batista in 1959 to become president of Cuba. When he comes into power, he doesn't, you know, destroy the place. He doesn't knock it down. No, he sends his political opponents there. I think that's quite rich. For eight years, Castro uses Presidio Modelo to bury his enemies. But his political prisoners begin to put up resistance and pose serious security and political risks. There is a dramatic plan to get rid of the prison using the underground guard tunnels. There was actually a plan to blow up these structures using that tunnel by actually packing it in with explosives. And thinking about the sheer size and scale of these structures, the fact that they had this inherent stiffness because of its shape, I think it would have been quite difficult to actually bring that structure down. Dynamite may not be able to destroy Presidio Modelo, but Castro does. The prison has a capacity for 3,000 inmates, but he packs it with double that number. Something that was originally designed to house up to 3,000 prisoners was now housing anything from six to 8,000 prisoners. Riots were commonplace, fights, unsanitary conditions, and the place was just hellish. The measure of overpopulation backfires, encouraging further resistance from the inmates, eventually leading to the prison's demise. Cramped, dirty, and overcrowded, Cuba's model prison is forced to close its doors for good in 1967, and Castro's enemies are dispersed to other prisons. It just stops to function, and it's a little bit dilapidated anyways, but the political climate had changed, and it no longer had a purpose to serve. The unique design and the function of the prison makes the buildings virtually impossible to be repurposed, and after 41 years of oppression and paranoia, they are abandoned. Now, the gigantic circular cell blocks of the Presidio Modelo are decaying shells and stark reminders of Cuba's political turmoil. As symbols, they demonstrate that groundbreaking architectural design could not only shape human behavior, but also reveal the limits of social reform and how easily it can backfire. <laughs>